Hello class, ready for uh, learning about writing a novel and we're going to take a look at some of the uh, things we looked at last week. We talked about the three modes of fiction and those are summary where you're just getting information to the reader in a very matter of fact way and then pretty much the opposite of that which is detail where you're taking your time and you're describing how people look, how places look, how things sound, all the sensory elements that are pretty much coloring in your picture, or your painting, I guess I should say. And then the third mode of fiction, which we didn't talk about last week, but we will talk about this week, is dialogue. And talking about uh, how the way characters express themselves to each other will advance the story. Okay, so, as far as writing, if people say show, don't tell, um, you can tell. That's what the summary uh, mode of fiction is. You can get information to your reader if it's just the best and most e efficient way of doing so. And so you're basically conveying facts and anything unemotional. Now, detail mode, you are showing. You're using precise details that help paint that picture in your mind. Now, again, like we mentioned last week, you don't want to use too many details and you don't want to use too few details. You just want specific meaningful details, details that will help your story. Okay, so um, that's pretty much what we're talking about there. Now we're going to talk about dialogue. And what we, when we're talking about writing dialogue, we're not just trying to convey all the hi, how are you, how's everything going, it's like small talk as we would say in real life. We're talking about compelling dialogue that moves the story forward. You're trying to tell a story, and you're telling a story with actions when things happen, when the hero does something, when the villain does something, the actions, that's going to tell a story. That's going to move it forward. Things are going to happen, and things are going to change and move the story forward. But you want the dialogue to do the same thing. You want the dialogue to be a part of the story and keep advancing the story. You don't want your dialogue to bring the story to a standstill. You want it to keep moving along while people are talking. So dialogue is not just conversation. It is the conversation, the words that the characters say to each other, but it is also the dialogue tags, like he said, she said, and of course there's a lot of other words you could use besides said, and you don't want to always say said, but you want to mix it up a little bit, but you don't have to be too, too fancy. And then of course gestures, the characters' gestures toward each other are going to... Uh, are going to affect the story and also even what the characters are doing while talking like he said walking across the room he said throwing his hands in the air you know so those are gestures that can go along with the dialogue and then of course body language as well you know crossing your arms that's a certain kind of that body language you know, putting your head in your hands you know also very compelling body language that goes along with your dialogue so there's three things that dialogue can do for our story. One of them is showing conflict. You know, two characters can be in a battle. They can be throwing punches at each other. They can be having a sword fight with each other. They can even be having a gun shootout with each other. But they can also be having a conflict with each other's words. You know, if you've got two characters, and it's not always your main hero versus your main villain, but if you have characters like them that are diametrically opposed to each other, whose ideals are conflicting with each other, they can have a battle with words too. Because, and it also, it's always good when the villain is not just a villain because he just wants to be a jerk, but because the villain believes that he or she is right. The more your villain can be convinced that they're the good guy in their own head and in their own world, the better. That's always a good thing. So you can have a conflict, uh, you can use dialogue to show conflict. Okay, the second way is, is to move the plot forward. And here I'm talking about the whole dilemma aspect, where it's either disaster or dilemma. There can be a time when there's not a lot of physical action going on, but the characters are talking and having a dilemma about what to do next. That allows your story to breathe so it's not all action, action, action. And it also can reveal the relationships between the characters and what they want and what they're, what's important to them and as they decide what they should do next. 
And the third part, that the third thing that dialogue can do is they can reveal character. Not just your main character, but your other characters too. The things that they say in when they're having these conversations can tell what these characters like and it can also tell what these characters are afraid of. Okay, we're gonna talk a, a little bit about your dialogue because remember, you have a bunch of characters but you don't want them all this, to sound the same. You want them to sound like different characters. Just because your characters, just in the same way that your characters look different, they're all going to talk different. So you wanna try to maybe throw in a little different style of speaking with your same, with your characters. Now, one thing I kind of noticed in my story is I made all my characters just really honest. Like, you know, Bobby is just very honest and says everything in his mind. Hana is the same way. Oscar is the same way. So they're all kind of a little bit too earnest and a little bit too honest is a criticism that I would give myself for the way I wrote those characters. But what you want to do is, I'm not saying you need to deliberately make your good characters deceptive, but in that way, they all kind of seem like they're cut from the same cloth. So you want to make it sound different when these characters are talking to each other. And one thing you can do is you can give them something called a dialogue handle. And that is something that your character says. I mean, if your character is kind of Southern, you can kind of throw in a y'all or two. But if there's a certain phrase or a certain word that your character uses a lot, you can do that just to kind of separate them, to separate their discussion so you know that that character is talking. One example actually came from real life. When Graceland was three years old, she started saying apparently a lot. And why is she saying apparently a lot? It's because apparently I would say apparently a lot. I guess I said that about it and she picked up on it and she started doing the same thing. So that's a dialogue tag that she picked up naturally from me. So I guess it was a dialogue tag. I should say a dialogue handle for me too. So your dialogue should be not like idle chit chat, like real life. It's supposed to be relevant to moving the story. Because remember, what we're making here is we're making a drama. We're not making a documentary. If we were filming this and filming everything, we wouldn't leave everything in there like it's a documentary. We would edit it so that the dramatic parts are happening. So that's the same thing with your dialogue. You want to keep in the relevant, dramatic dialogue and not the, hey, what do you want to do today? I don't know. How about you? You know, the boring dialogue, I guess you could say. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about gestures and active verbs later, but now we're going to do our vocabulary roundtable. Yes, I am sitting at a roundtable, so that's how it's going to be a roundtable this time. So go ahead and take out a piece of paper and write down these 10 words, which will be your vocabulary round table uh, words and we're going to have a little quiz on them next week so make sure you're learning these just like you do every week because we will have a quiz on these 10 words next week when we get back together okay the first word is a fix a f f i x and that means to attach to stick something to something else you're affixing something to something else okay Number two is a chord. An accord is like a contract or an agreement. It's usually something very official that's written down. If uh, two countries uh, come to an agreement after a, a war, that can be called a treaty. It can also be called an accord. It means you're in agreement. A-C-C-O-R-D. Now the third word is procure. P-R-O-C-U-R-E. And that is to obtain something, not by going to the store to procure some oranges. It's something that you have to procure in a special way, something that you obtain with care or with, uh, or with effort, something that's not easy to obtain, but you've obtained it, you've procured it. Like I've looked all over the kingdom and I've procured the finest flowers in the land. Okay. The fourth word is adorn, A-D-O-R-N, and that means to beautify or to decorate. So pretty much like decorating your Christmas tree. You're taking a regular tree, you're adorning it with ornaments. So pretty much meaning to decorate. All right, number five is preponderance. P-R-E-P-O-N-D-E-R-A-N-C-E. -E. Preponderance, that means great numbers or supremacy. Now that's a word that's used in legal terms where sometimes 
in some cases, you have to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. That's usually like in a criminal case. But sometimes in a civil case where you're suing somebody for money and just to see who's right, uh, it can be decided by a preponderance of the evidence, which is basically a supremacy or basically 51% of the evidence. So you don't have to prove everything to, to nobody could possibly doubt you. You just have to prove yourself more than the other person proved him or herself in order to win the case. You need to prove by a preponderance of the evidence. Now, number six is plaudits, P-L-A-U-D-I-T-S. And that's like applause. It basically means enthusiastic approval. So it can be written approval. It can be applause and cheering. Just a great showing of approval. You're earning kudos. You're earning, earning plaudits. That's another word for pretty much like kudos. <clears throat> Number seven is feral, F-E-R-A-L, and as the card shows, it means like wild or savage. You know, if a regular animal gets rabies or something and kind of goes crazy, that means it becomes feral. It may not naturally be feral, but it became feral. But other animals are just wild, savage, feral animals. Now, number eight is facade. It looks like facade, F-A-C-A-D-E, but it's really a French word that has that little curly Q on the bottom, an accent circumflex, as my French teacher mom would say. A facade, which definitely shows that it has a soft C sound. A facade is an appearance, but all, often a deceptive appearance. And sometimes, as it says here, this girl looks like she's happy for you, but she's really not happy for you. A facade can also be part of a building where it's a certain face of a building, but it's also not necessarily what it looks like. Okay, number nine is a bastion, B-A-S-T-I-L-N. That means a strong, fortified place, whether it is an actual fort or whether it's a, a prison or just something that's very built up and strong like a fort, a bastion. But, some, but sometimes that's not necessarily taken literally. It can be mean somebody who has a lot of something. Like if you say someone is a bastion of integrity, that means they have a lot of integrity. So a bastion can mean something physical like this, like a fort, or it can mean someone is a, a, has a lot of something, like a bastion of courage or a bastion of integrity. And finally is expunge. E-X-P-U-N-G-E, -E. and it sounds like a sponge, and it looks in this thing like a sponge. It means to obliterate or to eradicate, and usually that means someone wants to expunge your criminal record. Like if you committed a crime or two and you're somehow able to get some kind of deal where your record is expunged, where it's completely wiped out like it never happened, then that's what you're trying to go for, and to have your criminal case expunged or completely wiped away as if it were never there. Okay, so that's our 10 vocabulary roundtable words and we're going to go over them. Like I said, we're going to be quizzed on them next week, which is February 7th. But hopefully it's a little bit warmer than it is today. Okay, and then finally we're going to go over a couple more things about gestures and active verbs. We talked about dialogue and it's about the words, but it's also about the gestures. And gestures can show different emotions like you know, if, if a character is angry, they might clench their fists, they might throw something, they might bang their, their fists on the table to show their anger. When someone is frustrated, how do you show you're frustrated? Sometimes you go, you throw up your hands in disgust and in frustration, like, I can't get anywhere with this person, I'm completely frustrated. And uh, just mention the cold. Some you can even show how cold you are by shivering, you know, even gestures like that, not to necessarily show your emotional feelings, but even to show how your body is feeling. You can show gestures like that. Okay, and then on a different note, talking a little bit about using active verbs in your story, you want to have more action verbs than you have to be or to have words, like am, are, was, have, had. Because remember, you're telling an adventure story. You're telling a story that's supposed to have action in it. And when you think about action movies, like Marvel movies, or Star Wars movies, or most of all, Transformers movies, which are almost entirely action, it seems. It's just more action than you can even handle in your brain. It's more interesting when things are happening. So you want to avoid passive voice. Make sure that your characters are doing actions and is presented where the subject is doing the verb. Okay, so that's basically our lesson for this week. Thanks for popping in and joining us. 
What you want to do is you want to send me chapter two today because it's due today. Also send it to your story buddy. And then in the next week, you want to read chapter two from your story buddy and give your buddy some feedback and also start writing chapter three of your novel. This is another one of the big chapters where the hero is going to embrace his or her destiny and move on into the new world that's going to take up chapters four through nine. So the hero is about to say goodbye to the old life and get ready to embrace the new life in chapter three. So make sure that's as big and dramatic as possible. Okay. And also study these 10 words because we'll have a quiz. Thank you very much. Stay, war stay warm. And this is Mr. Gorman saying I'll see you next week.